Hi guys, my name is Danielle Ruski. I'm the owner of Salon 618 in Croft Investments. Just to give you a little bit of a rundown on my life, I graduated from Hebron High School in 2017. And in 2017, I also got my cosmetology license from uh, Don Roberts through the Vocational Center, which is a great opportunity for no matter what career you want to get into, if you can get into the, the vocational a vocational program that it's uh, a really great opportunity um, and then from there I went to Indiana University Northwest uh, and got my degree in business administration with a double minor in marketing and human resources and from there I've just been working a lot uh, and investing in real estate which that's where Croft Investments comes in at. So getting into the questions uh, for job description as an entrepreneur, my job title changes daily, but if you love leading others, uh, creating your own schedule and having a flexible schedule once you get to a certain part in your career, um, and seeing a direct correlation between the money that you make and the time that you put into a business, being a business owner slash entrepreneur is for you. Um, I just feel like if you want to be in charge uh, and you're a good leader and you're creative and you're willing to take, take risks, uh, being an entrepreneur, business owner, uh, startup company, anything like that, any of those words, it's for you. For education that you need to be an entrepreneur, honestly, as long as you have a good idea and you're willing to put in the work and you're good at communicating with others to build a team, you don't really need any extra education other than just bettering yourself through reading books, um, online education, and just really networking. Uh, having communication skills is by far the most important because you need to be able to create those relationships with people. But for me, uh, I had got my cosmetology license, which was 1,500 hours. And then, uh, like I said, I went to beauty school, or I went to um, Indiana University Northwest for my bachelor's degree. So that's my education. So for hours put in, if you're talking about being an entrepreneur, you're always kind of working. I'm always either on my phone thinking of ideas or talking to people, making connections. I'm wor physically working on clients or going to houses to check out uh, new deals. Um, however, for just like the average stylist, if you're interested in being a hairstylist, I would say most of the girls at the salon work between 20 to 40 hours a week. For how much you get paid as a stylist, uh, there's commission-based and then there's booth renters. Booth renters, you pay per, the, per day or per the week um, to rent the chair that you have, but you're in charge of all your own expenses. Um, whereas if you're commission-based, which my salon is, they make a percentage between 42 and 50% depending on um, what their experience level is. So for easy math, let's just say you bring in $2,000 a week to the salon and you're making 50%. You would be making um, $1,000 per week at 50% because you would get half of that. Um, and I would say to be hitting those numbers, you will probably be in the industry for about three to five years to where you're hitting consistently $2,000. Um, so you'd be making the thousand dollars a week plus the tips that you're getting and you can estimate that 20 or uh, 10 to 20 percent of whatever the sales is it really just depends on what services you do if you're doing haircuts it's going to be on the lower end more around 10 percent but if you're doing extensions um extensions or color i would say it's more on the 20 percent as for real estate which is my favorite and i'm not going to go into all the details but um, the biggest thing is cash flow. So on your rental, let's say you have your mortgage, your taxes and insurance, and that's $800 a month, and your tenant's rent is $1,100 a month, you would be making $300 in cash flow on that property each month. That's the biggest thing that I look for when I'm running my numbers um, on a property. However, over time, you can also gain equity, which let's say I bought the property for $150,000 and in two years it raised to $180,000. So along with paying down the principal of my mortgage, I would also have that additional $30,000 in equity that um, I have gained in the property. So being self-employed, um, you are in charge of getting your own health insurance and setting up your own retirement. However, um, at the salon, larger salons, they normally have at least some sort of 
um, retirement account that you could get into and some do offer health insurance but I would say it's not very common for them to. Um, at my salon, we do offer something called a simple IRA. It's basically a smaller, a small business's version of a 401k. And then um, we don't offer health insurance at the time, but I am trying to get that available for the girls. So what school subjects do you use the most in the job? So for being a hairstylist, I would say you'll use chemistry, art, and business for cosmetology. So you're going to be mixing colors, mixing chemicals. So you need to know um, how chemistry works so you don't like fry their hair off. You need to know the color wheel. So when you are mixing those colors, you're giving them a beautiful end result. And then you need to know business because even if you're just a solo stylist, you still need to be able to market yourself and build your own brand. Um, for uh, real estate, I would say the biggest thing is math. You need to just know how to do simple math, like adding, subtracting, multiplying, and dividing, um, just so you'll be able to run the numbers on your properties and making sure you're getting a good deal. As a stylist, the most rewarding part of my job is being able to make my clients feel better about themselves. Um, I feel like anytime you're feeling like you look good, you're more confident, um, that really shows in how you carry yourself. So to be able to do that for someone is just really awesome. And then an interesting part of that job is being able to hear so many different stories and backgrounds of all my clients and people that walk into the salon within the community. Um, for real estate, the most rewarding part of the job is the passive income. So that was the monthly cash flow like I was talking about. So I'm not physically working to do any of that. It just comes to me every month once I get that foundation set up. So for breaks and vacation, um, how much do I get? Um, for me, owning a business, it's not like I'm like, oh, you get two weeks of vacation every year. It's pretty much whenever I feel like I have the opportunity to go. I do travel a lot. I've built a team and I, my family is very supportive in helping me um, keep up with the salon. Um, but I would say on average, most of the girls at the salon take between two to three weeks vacation, kind of depending. Um, and at least at my salon, we're very flexible with that. Um, as a stylist, I feel like the biggest one that you start to realize as you get older is the um, the toll that it could have on your body, depending on how you're taking care of it. Um, just standing for eight plus hours every single day uh, can kind of hurt your knees or to using the same motions of like foiling someone's hair, blow drying, using your shears and like cutting someone's hair with your wrist in a, a non-natural way can cause problems down the road. But as long as you're being preventative and wearing good shoes, uh, you shouldn't have any issues with that. For real estate, the biggest thing is just finding good tenants so then you don't have any problems with them and they keep your house in good repair. So for jobs that I've had in the past, I've worked at Walgreens, Aldi, I did Instacart. Uh, when I went, I was going to college, I was Indiana University Northwest uh, social media manager. So I worked in an office and that kind of brings us into my next question of how did you find out what career path you wanted to take? So when I was the social media uh, manager there, I helped them create videos, do everything. I was working in an office. It was more of a nine to five job. And I quickly realized that just sitting at a desk all day wasn't for me. So that's when I really started taking the whole salon thing a lot more seriously. And then within a couple months, I was able to take over the salon owning it. So um, yeah, I could not sit at a desk all day. <laughs> So how did middle school carry into high school? Um, being active in mentoring clubs and sports, the biggest takeaway was learning leadership and be able, being able to speak in front of crowds comfortably. Um, being able to communicate is one of the most undervalued skills, I believe, in the workforce right now. So definitely work on that skill when you're in middle school. So by the time you um, are graduating college and getting into your own career, you've kind of mastered that skill. So the biggest thing that I took for granted when I was in middle and high school was just the quality time that I was able to spend with my friends. Our biggest concern, in, especially in the summertime, was like, oh my god, how many days in a row are we going to spend each other's at each other's house? And as you get older, that slowly starts to dwindle. Uh, you just get busier. You're starting to go down different paths in life. 
So my biggest advice would just be if you're happy with the friends that you have and you're having a good time, just really, um, really appreciate that because it definitely starts to change as you get older. Um, to kind of answer the middle and high school questions, kind of like B through F, um, I feel like the biggest thing, just to kind of wrap all of those up, is really just working hard, always showing up to class and just doing your work. As long as you do it, even if you don't completely understand it, someone's going to be there to help you as long as you're willing to put in the work um, and being sure that it's done. I feel like if that's a takeaway in anything in life, as long as you show up and you're ready to go, <laughs> that's all that matters because for people that show up, good things are going to happen to them. All right, so I'm totally going to nerd out right now. And the last question is what I wish I would have known in middle school um, that I do now. But I don't know if you've ever heard of Bitcoin before, but when I was in middle school, Bitcoin had just come out. And to just blow your mind for the last question, if you or your parents would have put $100 into Bitcoin back in 2009 when it first came out, it would be worth seven trillion nine hundred and sixty four million forty two thousand four hundred dollars so i'm just going to leave you guys with even if you only have five dollars five ten dollars every month putting that into some sort of investment account um you can get into mutual funds you can um ask your parents i did when i was a kid to open up a like a stock trade or some sort of brokerage account now they have robin hood on your phone um totally make sure you ask your parents about this before you do it um not giving you financial advice in that aspect but i just feel like being young and starting early and understanding understanding these financial concepts is going to rockets you to the moon when it comes to how your life is set up in the future. So I hope that this really helped. Um, yeah, thank you.